Well, hello everybody, how are ya? You look fantastic as usual. I hope you guys are doing well. It's time for Atomic Radio Hour, the post-nuclear podcast. Hey everybody, so we talked about it a little bit last week, we're gonna talk about it a little bit this week. The one thing that none of us can outrun, the thing that scares us, the thing that we're terrified of, the thing that no matter how much we work out or eat well or, you know, how much money we make, there's something coming for all of us. And that thing is death. I know. What a great way to start an episode on death. But honestly, death's one of my favorite subjects because it's one of the things that we know uh, nothing about, but we also obsess over to the day that we die. Uh, it's a thing that I'm thinking about at all times, and I am willing to bet you or someone close to you is thinking about death at all times, or at least pretty friggin' frequently. I'm not afraid of it, but it's something I enjoy talking about because I know so little about it. Now, in the Fallout world, we've talked, we've, oh, that's just an Instagram video that was open. We spoke a little bit about, a little bit ago, about um, the fellow who voiced No Bark Noonan, uh, the storyteller, all these people that are important to us in the Fallout world. And we've just lost another person. We just lost Chris Christofferson. Uh, he was a country singer, he was a songwriter, he was an actor. He was in the first version of. A Star is Born and a bunch of other stuff, but more, more importantly for us Fallout fans, uh, he was the voice of Chief Hanlon in New Vegas, and he died of Lyme's disease. Everything that I could see says Lyme's disease, a disease that is given to you that I know of by ticks, uh, these blood-sucking parasites, and that's about it. That's about all I know about the death of Chris Christopherson. Uh, and when he died immediately, the first thing I thought of was, you know, Chris Christofferson? Well, I'm pissed Christofferson. And just remember a time when Eminem was good and not just saying shit. Uh, Marcus and Chad is saying that he wasn't even aware that he was in New Vegas. He was. Do you have anything that you know him from or like him from? Because I only know him from New Vegas, really. Oh, he was even in Blade, Marcus is pointing out. Again, I wasn't really familiar with him, but it's just weird how it feels like everybody, everybody's dying. Uh, today I found out, I, I'm so bad with names, Pete Rose died, uh, from Good Times, I think it was from Good Times, the guy from Good Times died, the dad from Good Times, somebody else died, it feels like everybody's dying, it feels like 2016 all over again, uh, it's just one of those things I wanted to talk about quickly, because it's a part of the Fallout world, man, it's a part of something we interact with every day, um, I'm not terribly familiar with Chief Hanlon, mainly because I have a really hard time doing NCR quests because I just sit there and I was like, this is not what Tandy died for. And I get that's the point of the NCR, but I have done Chief Hanlon's quest. I wanted to do the one where he kills himself uh, on radio just because that would change the dynamic of everybody involved. I just think it's such a wild storyline to, to, to look down uh, just the guy who is so he should have been higher up in, in NCR, uh, but because of politics and Kimball. But Hanlon is one of those fellas who was there for the first battle. He might be there for the second. And he's just a sad old man. He also has a card. Um, honestly, I should have just did Hanlon for the for the the uh, lore this week, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't think so. I think to do it at least. He does have a card for the collector's edition. That's another thing that you might recognize Hanlon from. One of the few mods that I'm actually okay with playing in New Vegas is the collector's edition deck. So when I go play Caravan, it's all those cards, and they're all you know 4K scans and what have you. So rest in peace to one Chris Christofferson. Thank you. Now, I'd really like to get into this week's lore. And this week's lore, speaking of Chief Hanlon being associated with the NCR, it's about NCR stuff. And I want to talk about NCR stuff. But before I can do that, I have to thank the Patreon. Because of the Patreon, the show continues to grow and get bigger and better every single week. And like I said at the top of the hour, we do have Marcus here tonight. So Marcus, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of the live studio 
audience. If you like the show, link in the description below to the Patreon. You can check it out. There should be names on screen currently. These are some people that I have to thank real quick. So starting at the top, I have to thank the OG Noah. Thank you, Noah. After Noah, I have to thank Marcus. Thank you, Marcus, who is here tonight watching the show get recorded live at that film live for a studio audience tier. I also have to thank Mellow Millhouse. Thank you to Mellow Millhouse. After Mellow Millhouse, I have to thank Captain Lennox. Thank you to Captain Lennox. After Captain Lennox, I have to thank Danish Hound Dog. Thank you to Danish Hound Dog and to newcomer to the show. Happy to have you here, pal. We have to thank Brotherhood Outcast on Patreon. Make sure you check out the description below. There is a Patreon. There's a $1 tier all the way to a $10 tier. Each tier has its own perks, its own special features. Check it out if you get a chance. It's not... Uh, it's not required, but I'd appreciate it. I love you. Thank you to the people who are supporting. Enjoy the rest of the program. So for this week's lore, I wanted to talk a little bit about some NCR camps. I wanted to talk about a little bit of New Vegas lore. I wanted to talk about some fun stuff from the fan favorite, from arguably the best game in the series. I wanted to talk a bit about Camp Guardian and a little bit about Ranger Station Charlie, just two outposts in NCR territory in the Mojave that I wanted to talk a little bit about because they're small spots that I don't really know if people really remember. Uh, I know people probably remember Ranger Station Charlie a little bit better than they remember Camp Guardian, and I wanted to bring both of them up because outside of Ranger Andy saying, yo, go check out Ranger Station Charlie... I don't even remember finding that because someone told me to go check it out. I just remember going there and being like, oh, this is bad. And Camp Guardian, I found recently, and I didn't even know it existed. I just saw a spirally mountaintop, and I went up to it, and then saw that nothing was there, and wanted to talk about Someone in the, I'm sorry that I don't remember the person, in the Discord. Check out the Discord if you get a chance post something about like, oh, anybody have any lesser known New Vegas quest? And this is the one I was talking about. Go to Camp Guardian because I just didn't remember ever doing it, ever being around it, ever seeing it, any of that. And I was like, go check it out because for me, it was completely new. So if you'd like to hear any lore, and I mean any lore whatsoever from the Fallout series, be it the games, be it the comic, be it the TV show, what have you, check out the link in the description below because once a week, I ask on the Gulman Entertainment Patreon, a poll question, and your voice, yes, your voice, is heard weekly when it comes time to pick the week's lore. And by way of the Gulman Entertainment Patreon, I bring you the lore on Ranger Station Charlie from Fallout, New Vegas. Ranger Station Charlie. We're responsible for keeping the highway up through Novak civilized. So Ranger Station Charlie, at one point in time pre-war, was known as the Shady Pines Trailer Park. And before I can talk about Ranger Station Charlie, we gotta talk a little bit about Ranger Andy. He's an NCR vet. Now he currently lives in Novak in one of the little bungalows right next to the Dinky Dino shop. Ranger Andy is a character who shows up for many different quests, especially Raul's quest. Uh, Boone appreciates it if you go speak to him, but Ranger Andy is a character who doesn't know where his place in the world is anymore. He's an older gentleman. He is of a bygone era. Uh, the NCR being in full swing and full power, and now he lives in Novak. And while in Novak, he falls down a flight of steps and to a younger Ranger Andy, that wouldn't have been anything. He would have got up, brushed it off, laughed, and went back to whatever he was doing. But time is catching up with him, and he's slowly feeling and realizing his age. His bones begin to creak. His ankles begin to tweak. He begins to moan when he gets out of bed. It's the small things that come with age. Because of all this, he's starting to question how useful he actually is. And it's not just because you're getting older do you become less useful. Actually, as you get older, you become more useful. Your body might not be as strong, but your brain is stronger than it ever has been or ever will be and will continue to grow. He has his little ham radio that he uses to stay in, stay in touch with Ranger Station Charlie, and he really respects the NCR soldiers that are there. He's a man who really values his time there with the NCR. He really values his time as a soldier, as a ranger. He really believes in the mission. He really saw a sense of camaraderie. He found a sense of purpose in there. And they give him shit for being an older man, and they say things to him back and forth, and he kind of all just takes it in jest and then goes about his, his time and just happy to be a part of this community, to have this camaraderie, to have this past of being an NCR Ranger. He's very proud of it, 
but he's noticed that the radio communications have gone a tad bit quiet. And thus, he will give you the unmarked quest of Andy and Charlie. Now, I get all of my lore off of fallout.fandom.com, the Wikipedia, if you will, as a quick reference. Of course, I've played this. New Vegas is a fantastic game, but as a quick reference, I check the uh, Nukipedia, if you will. The quest of Andy and Charlie is simply to go, the unmarked quest is simply to go check out Ranger Station Charlie and go figure out why the fellas over there, their comms have gone a tad bit silent. I want you to inspect. The camp Ranger Station Charlie is a short jaunt southwest of Novak. Pretty much as soon as you get there, you find out the Legion destroyed the camp, like, entirely. It is it is ramshackled, there is bodies, there is blood, there is refuge, there is a bunch of sinew, just about. Um, they destroy the camp. The, the, the Legion has completely taken it. Uh, the only real person that is still there is comms officer, and I'm going to say this wrong. It is spelled S-T-E-P-I-N-A-C, Stepanik? Stepanik? Not quite sure. A comms officer, Stepanek, is one of the only living people there at Charlie. This station became incredibly important, especially because of the fall of Camp Searchlight. This was kind of looked at as a spot where people can go to. Uh, it's on a route. The only thing that sucks about it is because of its location to the mountains, it's range to Camp McCarran is really spotty. It's not the best. Uh, on a clear night, you could even get Radio Disney. There's going to be three people who get that reference to an American Dad episode from like 10 years ago. But they have really bad radio reception for the biggest, one of the biggest camps for NCR troops in the Mojave. If the player character goes there after the quest, render onto Caesar, Legion just owned the town and they'll just stand there ready waiting for anybody to come through because now it is their territory. And because I love the Legion and I feel like I have to bring this up especially, you can find holotapes or at least a holotape in the camp that uh, was purposely, feels like it was purposely left by Legion to say, hey, we came and took the town and did all this foul shit and uh, we also took hostages, so have fun. Just some fun facts, some notes for you, again, from the Fallout Wiki. You approach from the hills on the east side uh, from Novak, the Legion will be seen sneaking up, but they will not attack. Sometimes an NCR Ranger will just spawn in and he doesn't have any dialogue, he'll just sit there. And uh, a prospector could also be found resting there at certain points and times. That's just about everything I have on Ranger Station Charlie, a part of the game that I remember figuring out and playing for the first time when it was entirely too late. I mean, like, way too friggin' late. Like, I had been playing this game for hundreds of hours by the time I finally got there. Uh, it's neat. It's one of the small little pieces of New Vegas that flesh out the world to make it feel bigger than it actually is. Something that is highly appreciated and kind of missed out of video games today. I'm thinking about trying Cyberpunk. Um, it's just, you know, how detailed is it? It's not many things hold up to New Vegas the way New Vegas... New Vegas also just has that, like, cult status of it, which I... Everybody say thank you, New Vegas. Thank you, New Vegas. I hope you guys enjoyed that because that has been this week's lore. All right, guys, so here's segment three. I don't know about you, but this feels like uh, the least amount of news I've ever seen in my life. There is nothing that I can think of that I genuinely would like to speak on. That's about it. So, uh, I don't know. Is the world going to implode tomorrow? I kind of hope it does. It just feels like nothing's been going on. Nothing good, nothing bad. Like, and, and maybe the, the anxiety that dwells within me wants to believe that that means something traumatic is about to happen, and I don't want to speak that into existence, but, like, what's going on? Like, why does the world seem like such a dull place right now? I'm not upset about it, but I also would like for something to be going on that I could talk about it. It just feels like everybody's dying. Like, I don't feel like there's been any fun world politics. Not that world politics are ever fun, but, like... Video game stuff, I haven't heard anything. Kai, like, okay, the only thing I've heard is, like, uh, Minecraft movie leaks, uh, which we knew it was going to be bad. Uh, Kyle's been playing Dead Rising, and he said it good. I've been playing Hitman, and it fantastic. I really like the world of assassination. Great stuff. Good times to be had by all. Just, like, it doesn't feel like, maybe, but that, maybe that's a good thing. Like, maybe the stagnation is a good thing. 
you know, work sucks, but when doesn't it? Like, and I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about my job for the fucking program. Like, it's just, it's just, it, <laughs> you know, I feel like if I get a little too personal, it becomes a little too, uh, you know, it gets a little too parasocial. If I talk about what's going on in my, in my personal life. And honestly, I don't think you care. Like, you know, you want to listen to me talk about fallout BS and like videos, James shit. Like you don't want to hear about what's going on in my life. I don't know. These are things that are going on in my life. <laughs> uh, this lack of everything just, you know, I don't know. That's, that's my biggest thing. I think that as I get older, the more and more and more I understand is I just don't know things. And I think I'm just becoming more and more okay with it. I hope it doesn't stagnate to the point where I'm like, I'm happy that I don't know things because I am happy that I don't know things, but I'm like angry about it because I want to know more things. And I feel like I should be learning more things every day. If I learned two things yesterday, I want to learn four today and eight tomorrow. Like that's just who I am as a person. Like I want to continue to know more things, like especially worthless knowledge. I don't need to know. I don't need to know a gosh damn thing about anything important. I want to know worthless shit because I want to understand. Like I want to be understand anthropology to a degree. Like even if it's not like, oh, I have a degree in anthropology. Look at me. Ah, I'm so successful and accomplished. No, I just want to be able to be like, yo, I understand that these people work in these parameters because they are people that are in my community because they're people I care about because they're stuff going on. You know, recently I had to let somebody down and it, and it was upsetting and I didn't anticipate the way the conversation was going to flow. And then maybe, maybe that was a good thing. Maybe it was a bad thing. I'm not really here to discuss that or really think about it. Cause I don't really give a fuck to be honest, but it's one of those things where I'm more interested in the way the conversation has continued in, in, in the, in the time past because of various reasons. Because I think the way we interact with things, you know, I could sit down and go, oh, 50 different things are, have a possibility of happening, but most likely none of those things are going to happen. And that's kind of the beauty of being an adult. And that's kind of what I just like and what I want to, I want to just exist within. The more I learn about the people that are around me, the better I feel like I can be as a friend or as a person or a podcast host or a lover you know, whatever. Just, I feel like I could be a better human because of the people I surround myself. And I hope you guys kind of feel the same. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode. This has been Atomic Radio Hour, the post-nuclear podcast, episode 322. I have been your host, Vince. I want to give a quick shout out once again to the Patreon. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here, Marcus. I appreciate you heavily. If you like the show and want to support in any capacity, check the description. There's a link to the Patreon. There's also a link to the Discord, the Redbubble, my Twitter, the show's Twitter, Kyle's Twitter, the intro music. How did I forget the intro music? It's by the one and only Shane Ivers. It's called Feather Duster, and you can get all of his music at silvermansounds.com slash free music. Thank you for joining us for the program today. I love you very much, and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Love you. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Gulman Entertainment Production.